So your G, okay, your F, D, E, F sharp. Now that wouldn't be blues. There is no F sharp chord in the blues scale, okay? Or note in the blues, blues scale. There is a minor third. Okay, see that? Da, da, sounds menacing. Now you can have a, uh, you can have this called this chord right here. That is a D7. We won't go over that, but just make it maybe a D here. Okay, now make a G. Just take your fingers, lock them. We're just going to do no inversions right now. We're going to do, and I got. I know I have this sound down muddy, but okay. Make a G chord. You're hitting D, F, G, A flat, or G sharp. Now I'm going to make an A, okay? And this is an A chord here, and it's an A7. And I'll make this chord right here. Now you walk up from the major third of D, D, E, F sharp, chromatic format format and that's an A so you make this chord I would make a C E G A you can make an A C sharp E you could just make an A and a C sharp okay and back to D now I'm going to play a little bit of the blues in D okay I haven't done it in a long time Let's go to, we could go to E flat blues. Okay, and I can show you, we are basically doing this, this is what we're doing. And you can just play around with those chords. Okay, now I didn't spend a lot of time on that. Here's another one I won't spend a lot of time on. It. Guitar players love E. I am one of them. Okay, but we don't have a tendency to like it on the on the piano. That's a very very limited way of doing it, but you can get away with something like that. But uh, we have a tendency to like chords like that. Works better for us. Okay, we're gonna do E just for fun of it. Okay, so you want to know all your keys because if you know all your keys, if you got a jazz song or something like George or something, and it has something like some crazy E minor seven flat fly, excuse me, flat five, uh, A seven flat nine, D minor seven, and all kinds of crazy things going in there, you can do them. Okay. Okay. Uh, E7, uh, you want to do like an E7. I know it sounds a little bassy here. I'm going to move it down. Here. And I'm not expecting a beginner to know these chords. No way, no how. But let's try just the bass. That's why I got it so. E. Now go to A. Now, well, how did I know A? Well, E, I can go E, F, G, A, but that's not the way you want to do it. You want to learn your scales. But right now you just say E F G A, okay? But um, E F G A that would work. But you're not going to always be able to get away with that. You want to go up in the scale and learn your scales E F sharp G sharp A like that, okay? Just for knowing where the A chord. Would, let me start from, okay? Now I'm I'm doing E blues and I'm just doing this. And then I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to go, I'm not going to go up like that. I'm probably going to go, I'll call the minor third. I'm going to walk it up. Minor third to major third to A. That would work. 
And I know that some people are going to like. Now, if you have any questions and you want to make, I'll make something extremely simple and concentrating on that. But I've got so different many levels of people I'm working with. And now, so we're going to B. That's a B7 there. We won't go into what a B7 is, but that's the chord it's calling for. That's your five chord. It's made out of out of a B, and you work from there, okay? So anyways, now I'm going to do that again. And by the way, it's not easy to see. You're playing an E, and you're playing the notes B flat, A, G, E, which is part of the uh, C7. Uh, yeah, I know, it's a little weird. And then you can... Go from E to the A, and now to the B, and then you just walk this up with your fingers, okay? Now later on, I'll show you that you, you could hit the notes D sharp, F sharp, and B, and A, you'd be perfect. Just B, F sharp, and D sharp. That would work good. But you'll find the A fits really good with the fourth finger. And then go down in the scale. You see the E, B flat, A. G, E, that is the 5, flat 5, 4, flat 3, 1. Now let's go to the one I really like. That's F. That's his cousin. That's the uh, D blues. Okay. Now this is really, I'm going to stop here because we can go to G blues. Or the A blues, or the B blues, or the A blues again, G blues, and the F blues, and the E blues, and the E flat blues, and the D blues. <laughs> Anyways, you got the idea. You can go to all of them, but we want to try to work with something that's really nice. Now, I did show the C blues and F. Now, here's what you really want to work with is F blues. And when I show it to you, you're going to go like, whoa, I didn't understand it was that easy. Oh, it is. Okay. Now, the problem was I had been playing piano for years. I, and between all the instruments, tens of thousands of hours I put in. Uh, don't ask me. And some of it's just goofing off, so you can't consider all of it was, uh, you know, all uh, great music or anything like that. You know, played the blues thousands and thousands of times in all kinds of different configurations. Okay, but one day I was sitting trying to do an Oscar Peterson, which I think he's, he was so fantastic, it's unbelievable. He was a national treasure to Canada. Okay, if you ever listen to him, listen to C Jam Blues listen to him play C Jam Blues. Had one of the lightest touches. He had a guy from Czechoslovakia. His dad really taught all the family and showed them and they all taught their younger ones and so forth and so on. And uh, he was a locomotive, uh, I think he was a conductor or something like that. I'm not sure he was a conductor or he was the engineer or what. But anyways, he worked for the railroad company. And he would come and he would expect his children to all be, have done their homework musically, okay? And, uh, of course, <laughs> he didn't always do it, okay? But the thing is, I was listen, I was watching, I, I was looking at some of his music and I was going like, that's impossible. That is totally impossible for me to do. I just said, it's got to be, it's just got real long fingers and is able to, well, I was listening to another guy. And uh, he was showing something, but it was related with three fingers. And I found out these are your three strongest fingers. So then, after I play around with it a little bit, I went like this, and it was 
-hmm. not natural because I would do this. I was taught to do this C scale, which is related to thumb over thumb under. Can't do it that wrong anymore. I was taught to do thumb under under. It would come under the under like this, and I'd almost move my hand like this. Now I just do it over. I just know where I need to be. Okay, I need to be on F, so my finger is coming over. See that? Okay, and if it's D, it wouldn't matter. Whatever you have to, you have to work out your scale. I have to, you have to work out your scale, but especially the ones like this. Now watch this. That's actually easier than the C scale. Watch this. this here's C. You gotta stay on the same, same level. C D E, and they're all together, scrunched together. You notice that? You gotta be way over there, and the fingers have gotta be all over on the same level. This is two different levels. But C, by doing that, we're gonna go on F just for a minute. And then we're done with this. F, A flat, B, C, E flat, F. See how fast I moved that over there? I just knew I had to be there. If I need to be on this F or that F, see that? I might not get it perfect, but I practice that. And I might make a mistake because it's going too far. But uh, that was neat. Now, watch this. 